Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today, simple problem on entropy, just introducing the concept and actually introducing how to apply it to these thermodynamic problems. The problem statement reads, the radiator of a steam heating system has a volume of 20 liters and is initially filled with superheated steam at 200 kilopascals and 150 degrees Celsius. At the moment, both the inlet and the exit valves are closed, and steam is allowed to cool until the temperature drops to 40 degrees Celsius by transferring heat to the room. The entropy change of the steam during this process is to be determined. So let's look at the problem statement, and let's note that first we have 20 liters. So two things are relevant there. First thing is that the um, unit is not meters cubed, so we might want to convert that. That's 10 times, uh, times 10 to the minus 3, right? And also that they're giving us the volume. When they give us the volume, um, and not the specific volume, you can infer that we're going to need to calculate the mass, right? So we can be smart about that beforehand. Um, it's initially filled with superheated steam, so that's straightforward. We already know where we're going to grab the properties, which table to look for. And at the moment, both the inlet and the exit valves are closed. So this is another important information. Why? Because if the inlet and outlet valves are closed, there's no mass entering or leaving this radiator, right? So therefore, um, two pieces of information. We have a radiator, which is something that generally doesn't change in volume, and we also have the inlet and outlet uh, valves closed, so we should infer there's no mass entering or leaving, okay? Steam's allowed to cool until the until it reaches 40. Uh, so we're transferring heat. We're not transferring any mass. So there's only heat leaving this um, from state 1 to state 2. And we need to find the entropy change. And entropy is measured in kilojoules per unit of temperature, Kelvin, okay? So... This we're looking for an answer either in kilojoules per kilogram or in kilojoules, sorry, per Kelvin or kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. Right? These are the two options we have for entropy. They give us the volume, so we most likely will be looking using this one here as opposed to this the latter. Okay. So, so what how to how to solve this problem? Well, it's pretty simple, simple actually. We have a state, and one of the properties we can grab off of this state, one of the thermodynamic properties is entropy. So if we have a state that's defined, it's as simple as looking at the entropy in the uh, property tables and then grabbing that one and then grabbing the second one here and then doing the difference in entropy. So the difference in entropy as we go from state one to state two is simply the entropy on state two minus the entropy on state one. And that is our game plan. So how are we going to be able to solve this? Well, we have the first state completely defined because we have two properties. We have one property of the second one, but from what we could infer by reading the problem statement, we know that the volume in one should be equal to the volume in two, and the mass in one should be equal to the mass in two. So therefore, we can infer that specific volume of one equals specific volume of two. Okay, so what's the game plan here? Well, the game plan is I'm going to first look at this property table here and grab my entropy and my specific volume. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is on state one, grab my entropy and my specific volume. Okay, then once I have these two guys, what I can do is use that specific volume on state two, right? So state two, I can look up with the specific volume what is my quality, right? Or what is my, uh, let's put it differently, what is the state I'm in, right? And grab more properties for that state. So once I know what state I'm in, I can go ahead and grab my um, entropy for that state. Once I have both of those guys, I can calculate my difference in entropy. And then if need be, uh, actually we still need the mass, right? So. If I have the specific volume of this guy, and I know the volume, I can calculate the mass. Let's put one extra step here. What we're going to do is calculate the mass using the specific volume in the volume. And then finally, we do delta S. Okay, so state one, we know it's superheated. So I'm going to go down into superheated 200 kilopascals and 150 degrees Celsius. 
uh, saturated table, saturated pressure, saturated, superheated. I want the 150 Celsius and 200, so 200 is over here, 200 Pascals, 150 Celsius. So I'm interested in specific volume and entropy. So I'm interested in the 7.127 and on the, oops, sorry, on the 7.281 and on the 0.95986. All right, beautiful. Next up, we know that nine, this 0.9986 also needs to be the specific volume of the second state. So I can go to the 40 degrees Celsius on my temperature table my temperature table 40 degrees celsius and i can look here and check what is the saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific volume and we had a 0.98 something right and i can note that 0.98 is smaller than my saturated vapor yet greater than my saturated liquid so this is a super uh, this is a saturated mixture and we're going to have some liquid and some vapor. How to find out? Well, that's simple, right? I can calculate my quality by doing specific volume minus specific volume of liquid, specific volume of vapor, vapor minus specific volume of liquid. And we did, you know, plenty of these in the channel. You can check them if you don't remember how to do it. Okay, but let's go ahead and put our numbers down here. So we have 0.995. 95986 minus liquid, which is not not 10 8. Over here we have the one for the vapor. This is 19 19515. And here the same one. Not 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 10, not not 8. Okay, so my quality with those numbers. Turns out to be uh, 0 0.04914, so let's go ahead and approximate that. That's going to be uh, about 4.91%. Okay, so in other words, we have about 5% vapor and 95% liquid. So if I want the entropy, which is what I'm really after, right? I'm really after the entropy. If I want the entropy, the entropy is going to be about 5% of this guy and about... 95% of this guy. Okay, that's the combination uh, for my entropy. So I can calculate that quite easily. I want to know the entropy of the mixture. Entropy on state two is the entropy of the mixture. So that will be 4.91% times the um, entropy for the vapor, and that was the 8.2556. 2556 plus whatever is left. That is 100% minus 9.44.91, and then multiply by the entropy of the liquid, which is 0.5724. Note, right, as we've learned in this video here about a bit of a mental model about thinking about entropy, that the entropy of the vapor is greater than the entropy of the liquid, right? And we know why that is now, right? So check that video if you don't remember. And then my entropy on state 2 ends up being approximately 0.95. What is a unit here? What is a unit? Well, don't be confused. Check, right? Entropy, kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. So kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin. So now we have both entropies. Remember, let's go ahead and write them down. Where are we here? Delta S, delta S will be uh, the one that we just found, 0.95 minus the one that we found before, which was, I forget, it was 7.281, 7 but remember that they give us the volume, right? So if you were to calculate this, you would get an answer in kilojoules per kilogram, so let's put the unit down here, you get an answer in kilojoules per kilograms per Kelvin, which would be fine, but we can find the kilograms. So that might as well multiply this whole thing by the mass, right, mass, and get rid of those kilograms there. 
And that was our step number four. So to be able to find the mass, we can use the specific volume. Uh, and obviously it doesn't matter which one you choose because they're the same, in the same volume, etc. So if we want to find the mass, we know specific volume is defined as the volume divided by the mass. So therefore, if I want the mass, I'll just do the volume divided by the specific volume. In this case here, it's 20 liters. So 20 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed, right? Already converting, divided by the specific volume that we had from the start, which was 0 0.95986. Not 0 0.9, 9959. And this is in meters cubed per kilogram. So therefore, obviously these guys go away and the kilograms goes to the top there. Okay, so this is how much, this is very little mass. About 0 0.0204, 0 0.0204, very little mass, okay, kilograms. So now obviously the number here will be uh, 0 0.6 something, uh, 6 something, but then we're going to multiply by a very small number here on the mass. So let's go ahead and remove this and go ahead and put the mass 0 0.0204 kilograms and this will be our answer in kilojoules per kelvin and this turns out to be about 0 0.13 approximately and then obviously units are kilojoules per kelvin no kilograms. Okay. So once again, if you were to uh, solve this, right, if you were to solve this without the mass component, then it's not incorrect per se, but depending on the lecture that you have and the way that you, the question is phrased and the, you know, the arrangements you have, you might get an incorrect or a half correct, but this would be the final answer with no doubt. Okay. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below. If this video helped you out, considering giving it a like, and we'll talk soon.